is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Book 12 inch. Pretty exciting product here. If you're into pen technology, the pen's included in the box. Hey, the keyboard, keyboard folio is included in the box too. Take that Microsoft Surface Pro 4. You know, it's not just a strict Microsoft Surface Pro 4 clone though, because it doesn't have the kickstand. It does things differently, some things differently at least. Keyboard's kind of different. But what's important is, you remember the, the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S, the poorly named product from last year? That was the, the previous iteration of this that didn't quite hit things right. Number one, that name was not very good because because everybody thought with a name like that that it was an Android tablet. So marketing wise, kind of whoopsie there. Another problem was the fact that it was expensive. It was around $1,000, but you got a Core M CPU. And now we have a Core i5 in here, seventh generation Intel Kaby Lake. So CPU befitting the price and also saying they can compete with the Surface Pro 4 and many other Core i5 based clones out there. No Core i7 option on this though, but. I'm okay with that. Keyboard, much improved. Now it's an island style keyboard, backlit. It's much easier to use. There's other improvements too. We're gonna to talk about them now. All right, for those of you who are not visiting from the Tablet PC Review Forums and don't know exactly what this might be, hi guys. This is a 12 inch Windows 10 Home Edition convertible. It's convertible because we have a Pogo style magnetic connector here, folio case. And it's just ba bum. So you can use it just like this if you want. And it's a 1.58 pound, which is 717 grams tablet. So it's pretty light. Metal back, nice enough looking 13 megapixel camera on the back, five megapixel on the front. You know, Samsung makes a lot of pretty good camera phones, don't they? So they're actually using the technology here. So these are better than average cameras. So there you have it. It's a tablet. It comes with, uh-huh, the keyboard folio case. Everything you see here, you get in the box. Starting to sound like an infomercial, doesn't it? Well, that's a nice thing though, because what they're doing is they're competing with Surface Pro 4. And in fact, the pricing of the products is pretty much comparable to Microsoft Surface Pro 4 plus a type cover, but you're getting it in the box. So for the few of you who don't have a use for the type cover, you'll be bummed because you're getting it no matter what. The good news is like the Tab Pro S case, it doubles as a folio, it protects it. It's a kind of rubbery, feels good texture, doesn't show fingerprints much. You can wipe it off. It's you know, a little bit water resistant. You've got a little mount point here to hold the included S Pen, so it's convenient. And it's not too, too heavy. So about 2.6 pounds when they're together, the two of them, and that's 1.2 kilograms. Improved keyboard. It's backlit and now it's an island style and it resonates less. It doesn't sound so clacky. Very good trackpad. Now, I don't like this as much as the type cover, as typing experience goes, but honestly, it's not bad at all. I wasn't in love with the Tab Pro S keyboard. This one is pretty darn usable, even if it's not as good as the type cover. Of course, there's going to be the ch continuing challenge because Surface does have a lot of mind share, and anytime it's not as good as Surface, it's going to hurt. Ah, but where it exceeds Surface Pro 4, other than the fact that this is Intel 7th generation KB Lake, so it's newer here, and we have USB-C ports, something that Microsoft seems to not understand why we might want those forward-thinking people like us, the display. I mean, now Surface Pro 4 has a fantastic display. This is OLED. It's very hard to beat OLED, and it's a gorgeous example of it. 452 nits of brightness too. I mean, this is searingly bright. If you run this at maximum brightness, unless you're outdoors or in a super bright room, I don't know how your retinas can take it. But it's not just about brightness. There are bright displays. The color saturation here, the contrast, because OLED has infinite contrast, essentially because you have zero black levels, because there is no black backlighting with OLED. So there's no backlight bleeding ever. So what we have here is 500,000 to one contrast ratio. If you actually want a number, that's what our colorimeter came up with. We have complete Adobe RGB coverage here. We have more than complete sRGB coverage. We have 94% of NTSC. We have colors, accurate colors. So if you're if you're an art type and you're using this for print pre-proofing production, that sort of thing, you're gonna get the gamut that you need. Also, this pen, this just kicks Surface Pro 4 pen to the ground. Let me tell you, this is a Wacom EMR pen, not unlike that you see in Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. In tablet PCs of old, they had Wacom EMR. It's some of the best stuff out there. Now, why is it good? It has 
pressure sensitivity, sure, it even has tilt in Photoshop and in Samsung's own notes application. It's silky to write with. It's very responsive. And, you know, I'm not really a fond of these really skinny tips. This is basically the same pen that they use with the, the, the Galaxy Tab S3 Android uh, tablet, which I didn't love as much, mostly because the Android art and note-taking apps are kind of, mm, and the glass was very slippery here. But this thing just feels so silky, especially if you're doing like something like um, writing handwritten notes and you choose the ink pen option, the fountain pen option that's in the Samsung Notes app, it feels nice. So there it is. It does do some things better than Surface Pro 4. And for those of you who are pen centric, which could be anybody who's going to buy something that comes with a pen, that's an important feature for notes and for art. Another little brouhaha when it comes to the entry pens like that used in Surface is diagonal line jitter. If you're drawing a slow diagonal line, you can see here me writing, drawing rather, with doing diagonal lines, and it is just about as close to jitter free as you can get. It's like the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, Wacom's latest and greatest product. So that's nice. My only, I, you know, and this isn't Samsung's fault, but my only personal feeling is because I do art more than note taking is 12 inches is a little bit small if you do a landscape painting like I like to do. So there's a whole lot of zooming going in, but as a note taking product, super duper awesome, lightweight in size, it's great for that. And there's the 10.6 inch version, which is less expensive obviously too, if you want it smaller. Now that has a core M3 in it instead of the core i5 CPU. So it's gonna be a bit less horsepower. It's probably gonna be more for the note taking centric, the business app kind of crowd. And not those of you who are gonna get into something like Photoshop or Corel Painter 2017 or anything like that. The pen doesn't have an eraser at the end. It does have one of the quietest tips that I've ever heard or not heard. And it has a single button. And when you're in the desktop, if you click that quickly and wait, couple of seconds. It's not the fastest thing. You do get air commands. So you can do things like create a new note, take a screenshot, annotate the screen, that sort of thing. So we have the, the, the version for Verizon. That one is out first, the end of May 2017. You can get the Wi-Fi models at places like Best Buy, Amazon, Fry's, uh, Samsung.com as well, direct if you wish to do that. So the Verizon model is, they're all Core i5s, by the way. They all come with the keyboard. They all come with the pen. But the Verizon version is a Core i5 with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD. That's also available as the low-end Wi-Fi configuration minus the LTE. Now, that's a little skimpy by today's standards. If you're doing note-taking, if you're doing Word and Excel, and you're not calculating very large spreadsheets, just everyday small kind of things, that's adequate. But I think more people are going to be interested in the model that has 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD inside. Obviously, this is a sealed tablet design. You're not going to be upgrading the RAM, which is for sure soldered on on this, or replacing the SSD. The SSD, by the way, is a SATA 6 interface. No PCIe. Hmm. Surface Pro 4 has PCIe. Hmm. Well, except for the cheapest models. So the pricing for the Ryzen version is $1,300. That ain't cheap. If you want the 8 gig of RAM, 256 gig SSD Wi-Fi only model, that is $1,329. So yeah, I think most people are probably going to go for that and use their phone as a hotspot or something like that if they really need LTE on the go. That base model Wi-Fi only 4 gig, 128 gig SSD model, that is $1,129. So these are not cheap. And again, they're priced like Surface Pro 4 plus the type cover. So ports on this, you know, tablets don't have a lot. At least it's forward thinking. You have two USB-C Gen 1 3.1 ports. So not just glorified USB-A with a new connector. So that's a good thing. Yes, you can connect a 4K monitor, run it at 60 hertz if you get a USB-C to display port adapter. Yes, you can use pass-through charging as well. Since you're limited with the number of ports here, obviously you could plug in the charger and then, you know, one hub or device. But we have this Satechi hub here and... This is actually marketed mostly for the 12 inch MacBook. It works just fine, has pass through USB C for charging. Charger, very compact, it's smartphone style charger, right? So it's USB C based, obviously, and it's a fast charger, and it's fast. It really is. So on the side here, we have those two ports. We have a headphone jack. This big grill here is the speaker. It's pretty much where the Tab Pro S speaker was, only this is a bigger port. Just like Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book, surprisingly loud and full. It's just like shocking. This is actually better than the Samsung, Samsung Notebook 9 speakers, definitely. So one on each side for the speakers right here. Nice audio, just really nice audio. The bottom has the pogo pin connector that connects it to the uh, keyboard case, as you saw. And there's a little side 
card carrier right over here. You need a paper clip or a JECT tool to get to it. And if you get the LTE model, there's going to be a SIM card slot there. And no matter what, there's going to be a micro SD card slot. So not the most convenient way to expand your storage and get cards in and out. So if you're going to use this, say, with a camera to prove photos, which would be a wonderful use for something, especially with such a wide color gamut as this, it's going to be a pain in the neck to take those cards in and out, isn't it? Mm. Oh, well. Build quality and the looks, superb. Very stiff, very rigid. Samsung makes nice looking product. Yes, they do. Now for the kind of annoying part. So the tablet magnetically connects right here, the pogo pin connectors, and you can see there's a little bit of flexibility here, and it's pretty easy to, to get on there. Oop, nice and strong. Can hold up the whole thing if you want. That's all fine, that's all good, and I like the fact that it also protects the back, it protects the front, it's all good there. And you see, when you're carrying it, it does that. Now, there's even instructions for, <laughs> because you know it's not going to be easy, right, for how to use this darn origami kind of style stand. So you got that. That's pretty straightforward. This is fairly stable. Even if you're on the bus and your legs are bouncing around, it's probably going to stay. So that one's pretty cool. Any of the other alternatives that they show here for positioning, mm, yeah, good luck with that. So we can do this. And that's pretty, pretty decent as long as, you know, like that. I've had it collapse once or twice, but it's not too bad. And then lastly, if you want to use it like this, like when I'm drawing, this is sometimes a useful thing. They show you doing something like that. So what it does is it catches on the ridge of the bottom of the camera lens, I think, there to keep it up. So that can get even a little bit more dubious. So this is not as sturdy as something like the Surface Pro for kickstand, obviously. It's definitely better than the last generation. It's not that bad. Um, you don't get infinite positions. That position works pretty well. You can kind of, you can't do that because the camera lens gets in the way. You can kind of do that. So it's not too, too bad. But it's always these origami stands are a little bit less stable. It's not the end of the world. It just is part and parcel with the design. That's how the cookie crumbles, as the t-shirt says. Oh, snap. So the 12 inch super AMOLED display, as you know, I love the way it looks. It's three to two aspect ratio. Again, geez, this keeps coming up like Surface Pro 4. And that's a very pleasing aspect ratio because it makes portrait use less annoying. Uh, the resolution is 2160 by 1440, which is the same as Surface Pro 3. So that works out to 216 PPI. That's not bad. That's not cheap Cheetos in terms of displays, but still Surface Pro 4 is 2736 by 1824 for 267 PPI. I, I would go with infinite contrast and super color, color gamut, though, honestly. I'll, I'll just take that trade-off. Honestly, it's high enough resolution. It's not like you're going to see individual pixels on this thing. Some things that are not so great is auto brightness, which is turned on by default, is one of those it's always going to be changing. Even indoors, with, with not much going on in terms of changing light sources, you angle it, you move it, it fades in, it fades out, so I just disabled it, honestly. Now, Samsung usually loads their own custom software, which is a really nice control panel full of settings, and usually with things that let you choose, say, different color spectrums. You can go for sRGB, you can go for portrait, I mean, rather photo mode. It's sort of like you see on Samsung phones as well. I've always liked that. For some reason, not here. There's a Samsung update service that runs in the background. There's no discrete Samsung updater app that you can actually look at. And I kind of miss their tools. They do install a screensaver that's set at the factory to kick in after two minutes. That's because OLED displays tend to suffer burn-in. And uh, well, you've got a taskbar that's always showing at the bottom, for example. That can be a problem. So that's why that's set up that way. This has Qualcomm Atheros Wi-Fi. Really good reception, especially for a tablet. Usually, this is just not as much room for antenna, and reception isn't as good as some larger laptops. But uh, the reception that I saw far from the router was really better than any laptops I've seen. So it's a good job there. You have Bluetooth on board. You have NFC. And you got a GPS. You know, Samsung is a phone company. So sometimes some of these features just kind of bleed over, I think, from the phone department. The front camera at 5 megapixel is an f2.2 lens. The rear 13 megapixel camera has a f1.9 lens. Again, some of the best cameras you're going to see on a tablet right now. And again, probably stuff that's carrying over from the phone department there at Samsung, which isn't a bad thing. Now, battery life, it has a 5,070 milliamp battery. They don't ex uh, describe it in watt hour, unfortunately. They claim up to 11 hours of video playback. That's optimistic. Now, with OLED, it really depends. If you're showing darker content, then the display is using less power, basically. So it, 
if you're showing white desktops a lot, believe it or not, working in the web and in a white page in MS Office can really use more power with an OLED display than watching a movie that can have some dark scenes. You get the idea. Things are not usually eternal sunshine in movies, are they? So uh, typically I manage about six hours of battery life. And that's even been doing things like using this to, to work in Photoshop on things like artwork with many layers going. So it's keeping the CPU and the integrated Intel HD 620 graphics busy. In terms of performance, this was snappier than I expected. Granted, this model has four gigs of RAM. That can be a limiting factor, especially if you are using Photoshop with lots of layers. If you're doing MS Office, if you're doing note taking, if you're doing OneNote, actually four gigs is perfectly adequate. But for some of the more advanced tests I use for editing some photos and all that sort of thing, I would want the eight gig model. But it performed more snappily than I expected. Really, it felt just as snappy as my Core i5 Surface Pro 4 running on the last generation Skylake CPU, but performance changes weren't too huge between those generations. And it actually felt a little snappier than my 13-inch Wacom Mobile Studio Pro review launcher that Wacom sent us. And, you know, that one has a uh, slightly faster CPU inside. It's got the, the same graphics going there, but gee, I tell you, it can just get a little bit wacky sometimes, that Mobile Studio Pro. That might have something to do with it. At any rate, working on this, doing more advanced things in art applications and photo editing applications, I had no problems with this whatsoever. If you are going to be juggling big spreadsheets with thousands of hundreds of thousands of rows, if you're going to be using this for software development, compiling fairly long programs, I would say get the one with eight gigs of RAM. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Book 12 inch. Again, also available as a 10.6 inch too, if you want it smaller. Core M3 there though. Uh, this obviously, like I said, is the Verizon model that is shipping right now. The Wi-Fi only models will be available by the end of May, 2017. And as a Surface Pro 4 competitor, obviously they priced it exactly the same as the Surface Pro 4 plus keyboard. Chi, what a surprise there. And it's a solid competitor. I don't think they have the mind share of Surface products, so that's a challenge. And there are a few things missing, like no Windows Hello biometric recognition. I was kind of shocked by that. But on the upside, you do get Intel 7th generation CPU, so newer CPU generation. You get two USB-C 3.1 ports, Gen 1, on the side. So it's a bit more modern. And the performance on this really holds up. I thought I would be wanting a Core i7 when I started to get into Photoshop in many layers. And it's great. And the display, I... The display. Oh, oh, I just want everything to look like that, you know? They've done a good job. That's all I can say. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this video.